Hello guys, welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we will be doing part two of the My Mother Hero May 2018 kit. But first let's go over something. I have sped up my videos because I've had a lot of people complain about length. If you find this is still too short for you, please let me know and we'll see if we can work something else out. Thanks for your patience. All right, so for card number one of this video, we are going to use that wonderful tree stencil that came with the kit. If you haven't watched part one, please check it out where we unboxed it as well as made the first five cards. So I am going to tape this down onto a black piece of cardstock. And I'm going to be using my homemade glitter paste. I have done a video on this in the past on my recipe for it. So also I'll leave a link for that up above so that way you can check that out. So we are going to add this glitter paste, which is a gold glitter paste to this tree silhouette. Now, I typically don't use this kind of stencil for this only because there are corners that will lift because they're pointy. But I decided to try it. And as you see, I had some corners that did lift up and you get that smearing. But it's fine, we're gonna work with it. So now I'm gonna put in gold glitter embossing from Free Collections. Thank you for the beautiful memories. Our beautiful moments, excuse me. And I'm also going to heat set that. And then I'm going to do a bunch of little figures that came in the kit. Including the apple, the pear, the squirrel, the leaves, and the cat. And I'm also going to do one in the dog. Now I'm going to do some in gold glitter and some in a, the silver glitter that came with the March kit for Hero Arts. It has silver with beautiful gold glitter embossing. So I'm going to be using that. So first we did one layer with the glitter. Now I'm going to come and do this in the silver. I like their silver glitter embossing powder only because it wasn't too glittery, but it just had just enough, but it had that beautiful detail powder that you get with the Hero Arts embossing powders. Now I'm going to do this a couple times and I'm going to now do these with just a bunch of the little critters and stuff because I'm going to embellish my tree with these little figures. So I'm going to keep on going until I get quite a few of them stamped. So I'm going to show you one more time me cutting them down before I decide to die cut them out. So we're going to skip the rest of them that I did. We're going to go right into what I did. Now I had them all there and now I die cut them with the corresponding dies that came with it as well as I fishtailed the sentiment on that gray craft paper. Now I'm going to put my panel on a piece of craft foam. And I'm going to raise that up there. Now I didn't notice because my glue tape thing was dispensing weird. I kind of got a weird little bubble in it, but it should flatten out as I do it. Now I'm going to take my zig two-way glue and I am going to adhere these little silver critters. Now as I went through I decided I wasn't a fan of the gold glitter on the gold so I'm just going to stick with putting a bunch of the silver little animals leaves and fruit on there because I just feel the gold on gold was too much. This gave a nice contrast with the silver. So sadly, I won't be using the little gold figures I made, but that's okay. We'll save them for another project. So I'm going on here, just randomly trying to stick them in there, trying to also cover up the smeared edges where, of course, the embossing paste got underneath the stencil. And that's one of the reasons why usually when you use that, you would use more of a rounded shape and less pointy areas because as you're spreading it, it's going to get stuck underneath it. Now, if I was sponge painting on it, it's different. It won't lift. But anything that involves you smearing or, you know, pushing down on those corners, you get that little buckle. And then, of course, the smearing occurs. So, I'm, like I said, I'm just going to cover them with these. And it, and, which is fine because I was planning on covering them anyway. Now I'm trying to figure out, and I think I decided I did one on the bottom. So I did put some Scotch adhesive squares on the back end of that little sentiment flag. And I am going to use the little gold kitty 
but I'm going to put a little square behind it and raise it just a little bit. That way it's contrasting on the silver. And of course there was one little squirrel left. Now I'm going to use some of my gold and silver sunflower rhinestones that are available in the shop. Right now I have a bunch of colors in these from bright colors to metallics. Um, the metallics are more of a solid, whereas the colors are a Aurora Borealis style. And we will use some of the new colors also later on this video. But I'm going to hear these little silver ones, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to put some gold ones randomly in there. Because I'm trying to stay in this gold and silver family in this card. So now I'm going in with the gold. The one thing I have to say that I like about this Zig 2A glue is the fact that it comes out blue. Honestly, it makes it so much easier to figure out where I put the dots. But here it is, card number one. Isn't that sweet? Now for our second card, I have a piece of rainbow vellum that I had made with some alcohol hanks a while back. So definitely check out the link to the video up above. And we are going to adhere that on. And with it all vellum, it's better to hide your adhesive. So I put it behind my panel and left it loose on top. It'll get adhered down in the front when I put the rest of the, the items onto this. So we're going to start by putting on our swinging girl. So I chose black cardstock and I'm going to be using the vintage blue, which has these beautiful blue glitter embossing paste with chunky pieces of glitter in it and it really sparkles beautifully. So it does take quite a few coats of that to get a good coating, but it's totally worth it when you get it. So I'm going to die cut her out. And as you see, I'm using the washi tape that we got in the cat. And I'm going to kind of kitty corner and cut off that little corner that's hanging over. But I'm going to glue her down. Like I said, this is what's going to end up holding down my vellum on the top. So now I'm going to do a similar thing with the sentiment. I'm going to put in happy thoughts that came with the kit. And I'm also going to be doing that in the vintage blue. And like all my supplies, I will keep put this down below so that if you are interested, you can go pick them up yourself. I know Michaels has had some beautiful sales for this weekend, so always keep your eye out for those fantastic sales. So there's that. So I'm putting my panel on with some craft foam onto my card form. And now with some scotch adhesive squares, I'm going to adhere the sentiment on the front, also overlapping over the vellum, holding it down. And here are the Aurora Borealis Blue Sunflower rhinestones I was talking about. They're beautiful. They almost match the vintage blue embossing powder perfectly because they got that little bit of glitz and color in them, just like the glitter in the embossing powder. So I'm going to try a couple times of glue there. And I might need to reapply some more. Oops, I dropped one. Let me put it there. I'm going to reapply a little bit of dots of glue just so that I have plenty. And as I bring it closer, you'll see the, the, how similar the colors are in that. So next, we're going to be doing another silhouette card. I know that in the beginning, we saw, in the first part, you saw me do a lot of the silhouette ones. But this one, I'm going to be doing a little bit differently. Instead of doing a blended background, I am going to actually be doing a kind of cloudy, almost, I would say, almost skyline type of background. And what you can do is you make yourself a stencil and you just do the bottom layer just so that you see that little bit of white wisp on top. This is always fun to do. You can do this also with snowdrifts. It's a nice way to do it too. And I like doing it usually in the broken china. This time I used the Robin's Egg that came in the Hero Arts February kit. Now I'm going to line this with two tree trunks because we're going to build a scene here. 
And I'm doing this in the black tuxedo ink. Now I'm going to lay out my grass line. Like I was saying, there's been lots of sales going on the last weekend, and I'm sure it's going to be continue on throughout the summer. But definitely a time to stock up on some of your crafty supplies. If you're not a member of my newsletter, please click down below. There should be a link. And I do send out a weekly reminder of all the fun craft sales through a lot of my favorite vendors. As well as you usually get a newsletter weekly talking about the video we made if you didn't get to see it, as well as anything new that's going on in our shop. So I promise no more than two emails a week. So I have put the little girl with the kite on there and I spaced her out so that she wouldn't hit the tree. But now I'm gonna add this little boy running with a kite also. Like they're running with their kites together trying to catch a wonderful breeze. Now I'm gonna lay out my tree branches here and make a little framed scene with it. Cause I wanted the branches to almost frame around them so that it completes the scene and balances it out. That's one important thing, balance. You're putting balance in your cards. Spatial balance is very important because you want them to look full and especially with these black and white silhouettes because they're so simple that sometimes if you don't have that balance, you kind of lose that dimension to it. Now I'm gonna add that cute little squirrel. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put it. I think put it on top. And that way it adds a little bit more dimension to this card. Now, I did notice that I'm gonna end up having a little smudge right there. I'm gonna quickly take care of that with a little butterfly. And like I said in the last video, when I first saw the kit, I thought it was a bird, and I'm glad some other people thought that too, because I was like, oh, there's a bird on it. It's a butterfly. So I've had to adapt a couple of my things that I was gonna do. And there's a beautiful scene. Now, I'm not gonna do anything special with it. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Now I did notice I didn't like the white edge I had, so I'm gonna go over it with a Sharpie. I know, a Sharpie. Um, just making sure to brush the edges so that it doesn't look so white. Now, as long as you don't go too deep, it won't show in your other card form. So I just did lightly on the edges, just enough to cover up that white. So that's a trick. Even before you put your panel on, that's a good trick to keep the contrast off your black. Now I'm putting in it's little things that count in on white paper for inside the card since black card stock doesn't take sentiments inside well and there we go that's card number three now for number four we have done a galaxy one before and we're going to do it again and this time instead and also i'm going to be using the kit from august 2017 parts of it in this. Instead of using our Distress Oxides, I'm gonna show what it looks like when you do just the regular Distress inks. The Oxides give kind of a chalkier feel to it, so it's more softer. Um, I feel like these are more brighter and more vibrant because you get that translucent color versus that chalky soft color. So I'm going in with a bunch of colors. I believe I so far have used the mustard seed, the, I believe it was ras picked raspberry, the, and now I'm using the uh, cracked pistachio. I'm using the mermaid lagoon, I believe it was. And then I'm gonna go over it with black soot. But I'm just using a bunch of little of the color cubes that I have. Now, before I did it with the faded jean, and this one I was just gonna show you what it you kind of get as a difference using the black soot. You get a more darker, more galaxy kind of look to it. I mean the faded jeans is nice too, but this gives you more of a darker skyline look. So I'm gonna spritz that with some glitter spray like I did before and tap it down. And you get those beautiful little splotches on it. 
I'm going to heat set it quickly because honestly, we don't want to wait for it to dry. Now for this card, I am going to be using the backdrop. You know, when you get your card, it had all the information how to build a tree. Well, I'm going to almost duplicate the more closed, smaller tree. So I'm going to, of course, start with my, my trunk. And I'm going to go quite a few layers of this just to make it dark. Because I did this on watercolor paper, and I did use the cold press watercolor paper, we were having a discussion about why the texturedness of the paper that came with the kit was considered hot press. I think the te texture was more organic. It wasn't that the hot press was more textured. It was more that this hot press was more textured um, because it was more organic. And it was also thicker. Um, it was, I believe, 140 pound. So it was really thick watercolor paper. So I feel like when they did the pressing, you got more organic texture to it. Most of the time, hot press has less what they call tooth versus the cold press, um, which means you get less of the little bumpies. And it's usually more ironed, though I have to say, I guess it would still count because even though there was wrinkles in the paper, they were smooth wrinkles. And I'll show you a technique with though that later on. But as you see, I'm starting to get the branches here for that tree. And I'm following the diagram almost to a T of what they had, just to get that same kind of look. And there we go. I'm gonna go over the trunk one more time, just so those limbs kind of blend in a little better. All right, and I did have a little slip up on one of the branches, so I'm just gonna go over with my black slip marker. And I'm also gonna color the trunk down a little bit, give it a little bit more contrast on the tops of the limbs, that way they blend better. And I don't care if the branches and their leaves are a little fainter, it's fine. So now I'm gonna add the grass. And it's not taking it first, I think I'm just gonna have to push a little harder. There we go, and now we're getting some color. And I'm gonna go one more time. And I'm gonna line that up a second time. Get the second part of the grass. And there we go. Now I did say I was gonna bring in elements from the August kit from 2017. And that was a starry sky one with all the beautiful silhouettes that I talked about in the last video. They have beautiful stars in there, so I decided to pull some of those stars out. And I'm going to do that in the Recollections Gold Glitter embossing powder. That way they kind of glitter. And I'm going to do this a couple of times just to spread out some of the stars. I really liked how this was coming out. And I keep on putting my anti-static tool because I am not sure if parts of this may still be wet. So instead of dealing with it being wet, which some of it was, and I later noticed that some of the specks actually stuck to the thing, which is fine. It actually gave some beautiful texture to the tree. So I'm going to adhere this now to a piece of craft foam to appear to my card form and since I used a lot of water on this I want to make sure it stays flat so I'm going to go crazy with glue just so I know it adheres well and I'm going to be putting this on a black card stock card form isn't that beautiful all right, so I'm going to flip over my stuff since my branches went over a little bit, and I'm going to add the sentiment, thank you for the beautiful moments again, black ink, and I'm going to roll some adhesive on my paper and adhere it in. This kit actually made me use a lot more black card stuff than anything else because it just silhouettes go better. Now, this card is actually kind of fun. I'm going to be doing a little almost window card. But first, we're going to decorate our paper we're going to use for our window frame. 
So I'm going to use a lot of these branches and I'm going to play around with organizing them in whatever way I want so that I can get the most color onto this panel. Now I probably am going to end up using this card actually for my um, son's teacher. She's actually retiring this year and my son thought it'd be fun to make her a beautiful card. And I think this one's perfect because she's very earthy and loves the woods. So I thought this would be fun. Now I'm not concerning myself with how perfectly the first color went down, which was the bamboo leaves, because I'm going over it with some cottage ivy. And then I'm going to be going over it with the rich cocoa. So there's going to be like three layers of color on this. So if the first one didn't come out thick, no problem. I'm coming over with a second layer. And I'm going to kind of blend those colors together to give it that, that green and brown family together. So they almost blend together. Now I'm going to take a stitch die from Cottage Cuts and cut out my circle. The oval that came with the kit was a little too big. Now here's some of that hot press watercolor paper that came in the kit. And you can almost see the texture in it as I put this vintage photo distress ink on it. It has so much texture, but it's really smooth. So I think that's where it gets classified as hot press, even though there's tons of texture on it. And that gives it a little distressing on it. Now, I almost made a mistake and I put my adhesive on first and then I realized I didn't put my window. So I used some acetate and I cut it small enough to fit in there and give that window. So now I have all my pieces of foam cut because I had cut it before. And I'm going to place them on this around the frame so that I leave enough room for everything to fit, but yet to raise it up enough so it the leaves can be inside. So I'm going to take those little skeleton leaves that came with the kit and scatter them inside. And then I'm going to take the watercolor paper that we just distressed and I'm going to actually place it right on top of this foam just to give a backing to our window. I mean, I guess this kind of sort of classifies as a shaker card, except the contents don't shake. So that's why I call it more of a window card. Isn't that fun? So I'm going to take some Golden Craft and I'm going to put a beautiful little sentiment on it after I put a bunch of foam on this. The first sentiment inside is going to say, thank you for the beautiful moments in the Cottage Ivy. And then I'm going to take the little piece of it and I'm going to put it's the little things that count. And I'm going to do that in white embossing. So I'm going to use my snow embossing powder from Rick Collections. And I'm going to heat set that. But first I'm going to adhere my window to the card. And I decided to fishtail the sentiment and adhere it on there. I'm not going to use any craft foam to raise it because there's enough craft foam with the foam tape. But then I felt it still was needing a little something. So I took out some of the Aurora Borealis pearls that we have available at our shop. And I am going to add the rainbow kit and add a bunch of beautiful colors in between the leaves just to fill that space. I'm trying to go with as neutral of colors as I can to stay in the color family that's in the colors of this card because I want that natural look to it. All right, so we're almost there. Just a couple more pieces. There we go. I think that's it. Isn't that adorable? It's so much, so beautiful. I love this card. Now on to our bonus card. Sorry, this was such a fast video compared to what my other ones were, but I hope you got some fun ideas for your kits. Now this one, I'm going to do that oval window frame, but I'm going to take this to a next level. I've seen some people watercolor them. So I cut this out of watercolor paper and I'm going to add some of my mowed lawn as well as I believe it was vintage photo 
onto this frame and I'm going to just paint it in in a watercolor feel. Because I thought that was a really fun concept using watercolors to color in the frame. And so I'm just blending my colors together. I'm not taking any concern to how it's laid out. I'm just laying it out. And I am coloring this swing, though I am planning on most likely cutting it out. And we'll add some more. More of the mold on. And I think that's looking pretty well blended. So I'm going to put that aside and let it dry. So while that's drying, we're going to do a background panel with the broken china and the faded jeans. So I'm starting with this and I'm kind of doing a little swirly pattern in my blending just to let that kind of look like a skyline in the background. Now I'm specking this with some water from my water brush. And I did get a little bit of green on it, which is fine. Nobody will see that top part anyway. So we're just making sure those speckles look good. And I cut it out with the same oval die. So kind of what we did previously in the last video with the galaxy scene. But this time with a painted frame and a more blended background. So now I'm going to put the girl and the cat um, in Primary Bark from Wow. I love this embossing powder because it has a nice vintagey brown feel. And I'm going to die cut her with the corresponding die cut, her and the cat. So we're going to go back through there. Lay that down and then I'm going to glue her and try to slide her right underneath there so she looks like she's blended in. And then I'm going to adhere the little cat up on the top branch. Oops, if it will stick. There we go. Now I felt there was a little bit of speckles on this card in the embossing, so I'm just going to go over it with my distress pen just to give it a little bit more color so it looks more blended. Now for the sentiment inside the card, I chose swinging by to say hello. I'm doing that in the rich cocoa. Now using the same paper I used earlier, I'm also going to emboss happy thoughts in the same primary bark. And like all of it, I will add a link down below so you can Purchase these colors if you're interested in them also, as well as all the supplies I use in this video. Now, like I did previously, I'm going to put the foam on there and then fussy cut it out. And I'm also going to put my little sentiment flag. And then we're going to take some teal and copper ombre pearls. I've currently run out of these on the shop. But hopefully there can, there's a ton of different other color ombre pearls available. They are classified together in all the ombre pearls. So definitely check out the listing that we have there because there is multiple colors available under that listing. There's your bonus card. Isn't that sweet? Oops. Let me put one more gem. So there's your bonus card. Well, I hope you enjoyed this version of my video. If you like it, please check out the previous video where we went through part one, as well as a video especially curated just for you. 
And like always, we welcome you to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you are on our newsletter, please join by clicking the link down below where you'll get crafty emails as well as video updates.